Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, we're gonna go over on holdings, ticker symbol O-N-O-N. -O -N. Company reported their Q3 earnings November 14th, beat on top and bottom line, and also gave us some guidance. And with that guidance, all seven analysts covering this company actually revised their next quarter expectations lower. So year to date, company is up basically 75% and up one year's 58%. Uh, short interest sitting at 9.2%. Market cap, $9.6 billion with a forward PE of 52. And in their guidance that they kind of gave, uh, kind of just a quick summary of their overall quarter there, they, they managed to pull off 47% year-over-year revenue growth. They also raised their 23 guidance. They expect to reach higher gross profit margin of at least 59%, which they are actually already currently achieving. But net sales in America grew 60.5%, so pretty good. And Asia Pacific rose 71.5%. Obviously, these numbers are pretty nominal. And these growth rates here are uh, should be expected at such small numbers such as these ones. We'd like to see these numbers continue to stay elevated in those higher uh, percentages until these numbers start to grow into higher, bigger digit numbers as well. So what this company does is they make shoes and apparel and we're on the men's shoes here. We can see they do running shoes, hiking shoes, and some tennis shoes as well. Some of the styles of shoes that they do offer and sell, you can kind of scroll through there. Women's shoes are very relatively similar to the men's style as well. Now, obviously one of the biggest things as a shoe company is good advertisement and what this company does, at least the two athletes that they advertise with, Ben Shelton and Helen Obiri, uh, both runners, that uh, the Ben Shelton, he managed to get himself into the semifinals at the U.S. Open. And Helen won the Boston and New York Marathon in the same season and being the first woman to win it, both those uh, in 34 years. So very good. So I, I don't, I'm not familiar with either one of these athletes, but... By the sounds of it, it sounds like they're pretty decent athletes, and I think that would definitely make for very good advertisement, especially for people that are runners and expand their popularity. But over to the financials on this business here. We are currently actually on these financials here. We're going to be looking at these financials on this particular page, but once we get over to the comps and calculator, it switches over to USD. But currently, we're going to be looking at it through Swiss, but it's not that big of a deal because we're going to be looking at charts and not really numbers here. But we got revenue, gross profit, and net income. We can see all three trending higher. Very good. Net income starting to taper off a little bit. We'd really like to see it catch up a little bit, but obviously, it does cost money to advertise with athletes and to grow the business and get more awareness of the shoe. It's going to take some money and some good advertising to do so. Gross margins here, we're sitting at about 59.9% last quarter, trailing 12 months, 59.1%. So they're getting 59% like they expected. Net margins last quarter, though, were 12.2%, trailing 12 months, 4.7%. So it'd be pretty awesome if they can maintain and, and repeat 12% roughly on a net margins going forward. That'd be very good. Revenue and gross profit year over change, we can see we are still getting some very good growth within this business. Return on invested capital sitting at 11.7%. PE ratio today at 104. Earnings yield, and it's basically nominal at 1%. Cash short-term debt, though. They do have more cash than short-term debt, but they do not have more cash than total debt. But that's something probably to keep a close eye on because we can see their debt is kind of growing pretty quickly. So I think that is something to keep a close eye on, make sure that doesn't get too out of control. But for now, it's still uh, in a pretty good range, I believe. So the company is positive net income, but negative free cash flow. As we can see, net income is $80 million. And we come over here to capital expenditures. 63 of that gets taken out of our 83. And that leaves us with 17. And then with all the other changes within the cash flows, we are then left with negative free cash flow of $22 million. So I have not quite yet seen a positive cash flow year. Share count dilution, currently not getting diluted, uh, very slightly diluted, actually, very slight dilution with a uh, stock based compensation up here, but not, not a, it, they've, based on last quarter here, we're looking like they're slowing down stock based compensation quite a bit. So that'd be very good, assuming that maintains about a six million dollar rate per quarter that would leave us with about 24 million dollars 
and that would be half of what it was last year. So that'd be very good. So over to the comps, I pulled in Nike and Skechers. I pulled Nike because it's probably the leader of the of the industry. And then Skechers is more kind of in line with where on holdings is in terms of market cap. So we come down here to our comparison charts and we can see here's our market cap to revenue and obviously Nike, but we can see Skechers is sitting at a market cap of basically $8 billion. And we got on at $8.4 billion. So I think those two will be a relatively decent comparison for now. And we can see growth right over here. We can see that on is gonna is forecasted for some very good growth for the next five years and much better than the competitors at the moment. Gross margins, obviously, look at that. It's very good. And then your operating margins, not too bad. Could be a little bit better. And then profit margins, again, it's probably gonna take a little bit of money and additional capital to get their advertising out there, to get their product out there, to get some awareness of the overall shoe. So I would not expect them to grow beyond these percentages just yet, but hopefully in the future, they can continue as they get in more revenue. Maybe you can start seeing some more profit roll into the business. Really would like to see them beat Nike. Obviously last quarter they had 12%. We'll have to see if they can repeat that or not. So over to the valuation spreadsheet. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to value this company based on today's numbers, such as the EPS and PE. And then once we go through that, then we'll come back and plug in forward looking numbers, which we will pull from Seeking Alpha here. We got EPS, our forward numbers of EPS and PE. So currently today, peanut valuation gives them $12.16. Our multiples between the two companies we just compared to is $7.43. Price to book sitting at 7.76, five year average is eight peg ratio because this company just pulled a profit. Uh, we are looking at a pretty high peg ratio right now. Grams valuation gives them $22.25. Discounted cash flow, company does not have positive free cash flow just yet, so we do not use this particular calculator in this instance. Rule 72, we have three sources of EPS growth rate. I did throw a zero in there just to bring down our EPS growth rate of down to about 28 for an average, just because this is kind of forecasting 10 years worth of time. So we don't want to expect a 28% EPS growth rate for 10 years when that's probably very unlikely. So with that, we get to double our current EPS four times. So we come down here to our chart four times, it gives us about a four for future EPS. Gives us a fair value of $55.61. So on our summary of on, we can see currently trading about $30 per share. Our fair market value today is $19.26. 30% margin safety is $13.48. Annals price target, $34.71. So I've went ahead and plugged in our forward looking numbers, our forward EPS and our forward PE. Gives us a new peerage fair value of $25.18 raises our multiple comparison to $15.39, does fix our peg ratio into more of a fairly valued area. We can see basically sitting at fairly valued. Grams valuation giving them $46.08 per share. Our DCF will not change because we did not change our free cash flow growth rate at all because we cannot really forecast that at the moment. And our rule 72, we can change a little bit because we did increase our earnings per share. So if we were to potentially maybe say, okay, let's give them, we'll bump it up like one. We don't want to go too crazy on this. So we'll give them a five for future EPS. And that gives us $69 and 52 cents per share. And with that, our summary then becomes $31 and a penny as a fair market value and 30% margin safety, $21.70. So that puts us about $3 and 70 cents shy of where analysts are right now. Over to the stock chart. Uh, company IPO a couple years ago. We are currently on the weekly chart as well. And we could see after IPO had some euphoria and then pulled back quite a bit as most IPOs typically do. Financials came out and analysts were able to analyze this company better, get a better understanding of financials and growth and how it's performing. And now they can kind of see that obviously we can see as well financials have turned around or not just turned around, but have consistently just grown and uh, that gives kind of, uh, a lot of confidence to investors and then they start investing into the business obviously and with that we can see that obviously some pretty good buying pressure and is now creating a channel on the weekly chart here of higher highs and higher lows and we've currently just bounced off low or higher lows and potentially working our way back up to maybe about 38 ish dollars per share by the looks of it and maybe even punch up a little bit higher there is quite a bit of resistance up here to the 38 dollar range 
you're likely going to see quite a bit of profit taking, I would imagine. And we would likely see a pullback to trend and then maybe find a resumption back into this channel. So that would be my assumption on this, this stock chart here is to see it come up to here, pull back and then resume back in the channel here. Again, that all comes with financials as well and forecasts. As long as those hold up, then this channel should also hold up and maybe someday it might break out of it as well. But that is it for On Holdings. If you found value in this video, drop a like, subscribe, comment back later with another stock analysis video.